Hello and welcome to the Verification Academy and the fourth session of our advanced UVM course, How TLM Works. My name is Tom Fitzpatrick, Strategic Verification Architect here at Siemens EDA. And in this session, we'll learn how we handle transaction level communication between components. Let's get started. In UVM, the communication between components is done through what we call TLM or transaction level modeling. TLM is all about communicating through method calls. So we have what we call a port in one component, typically referred to as the initiator, and that specifies the API to be used to communicate through that port. The port is actually an object in UVM that defines the set of methods that you have access to in order to do the communication. In the target, we have what we call an export, which supplies the implementation of those methods. In these diagrams, we'll use squares to designate ports and circles to designate exports. The connection is between the port and the export. So in the environment, we connect the initiator port to the target export by calling the connect method of the port and passing the export in as the argument. We do not actually connect one component to another, and this is to provide flexibility when we get into the factory, as we'll see in a minute. In UVM, transactions are objects that encapsulate the information we want to communicate. Each of the ports and exports is parameterized by the type of transaction that flows through the communication. So the transaction is an object, and by parameterizing the ports and exports through that transaction type, it allows us to determine at compile time that we're connecting the correct type of port to the correct type of export. So we know by construction that our environment is set up correctly. Because we're making the connection from the port to the export, as I've said, the factory can replace one target with another as long as it's of similar type and has the same set of interfaces. Notice that the code in the environment doesn't have to change and we can still make the connection because it's still connecting the initiator port to the target port. We can make connections hierarchically in UVM as well. At the highest level, we connect the port to the export. So in the environment, we connect the port of P1 to the export of P2. If P1 has a child connection, then that child port needs to connect to the parent port. So we say child port dot connect to parent port. Similarly, on the target side, we need to connect the parent export down to the child export. So we say parent export dot connect to child export. All of the connections start from the originating port that makes the call all the way down to the target export that supplies the implementation. If we look at these components now in C1, we define the port. Again, it's parameterized by the transaction type. And the target supplies the implementation. The implementation actually has two parameters, the transaction type and the component that actually contains the implementation. In C1, in the run phase, we call the put method of this particular port, pass it in the transaction, and that causes the method that's supplied in the implementation to actually be called with that same argument. So when we call put from C1, the implementation supplied in C2 actually determines what happens. But the semantics are defined such that when you put a transaction, it goes out of C1 and into C2, and C2 then does something with it. So if we replace C2 with a different implementation, it still takes the transaction from C1 and does something to it. It may do something different, but the actual semantics of having that transaction go from C1 to C2 are still in effect. We may need to be able to have one component communicate to multiple other components. And this type of connection is called an analysis port in UVM, and it's denoted by a diamond. With an analysis port, the API is simply a function called write. And when you call write in the originating component, it calls the write implementation in all of the components that are connected to it. So every connection to the analysis port supplies an implementation of write, and they each operate on the transaction that gets passed in. Now the thing to remember is that each of these contains a pointer to the original transaction. So if one subscriber modifies the contents of the transaction, all subscribers will see that change. So we recommend that you actually make a copy of the transaction before you change it in any way. Usually components that are connected to an analysis port are extended from the UVM subscriber base type, parameterized by the type of tr the transaction, and they implement the method called write. 
The UVM subscriber has a built-in analysis export that you simply need to connect to. And all you have to do is to extend from the UVM subscriber and fill in the details of the right method. Sometimes you have a component like a scoreboard that needs to have multiple input streams to it. Since a subscriber has a single analysis export, it only allows you to send in a single transaction stream. If you need multiple transaction streams, we recommend that you extend the UVM component base type and include multiple exports. Now there are two ways that you can implement this particular kind of structure. The first is outside of the component definition, you use this macro called UVM analysis imp decal. This macro allows you to declare analysis implementations and you supply as the argument a string that is going to become the suffix for not only the name of the export, but also the right method that's associated with it. Inside of the component, you instantiate the implementations with the suffix. So now we have UVM analysis imp before and UVM analysis imp after. Notice the parameterization there as well. We call them before export and after export or whatever it is that you want to name them. Then we implement the two write methods, again, write before and write after. And these are the suffixes that we declared in the macros. So now when a transaction comes into a given export, the associated write method will get called for that particular export. The thing to remember is that the write methods are functions, so we can't synchronize between the two streams because there's no way of putting a delay in the write method since it's a function. If you need to be able to have these two streams somehow synchronized, then the other choice that we recommend is to embed analysis FIFOs into your scoreboard component. The analysis FIFO actually provides an implementation of the analysis export, and we just need to make them available at the interface of our scoreboard. So you simply declare analysis exports in your scoreboard component, and then connect those parent exports to the exports of the FIFOs. So now when your analysis port calls right on one of the particular analysis exports, the transaction will get put into the appropriate FIFO. Then in the run phase of your component, you can pull from the FIFOs as necessary and do whatever synchronization you need to between the two transaction streams. This gives you some additional flexibility to make sure that if you're doing an in-order comparison, for example, when you get a transaction in on each of the two input streams, then you pull them out and compare them and you can go on from there. Depending on how you want to set up your environment, you have two alternate implementations of how to do a scoreboard depending on whether or not you need to synchronize between the two incoming streams. And you can add three, four, or however many exports you need to to your scoreboard. In UVM, we've also added support for TLM2. TLM2 is a system C standard like TLM1, and we've implemented the key parts in system Verilog and included them in UVM. TLM2 focuses on bus-based communication and simplifies bidirectional and pipeline communication through the use of sockets, which are basically a combination of a port and an export with a single connection. Unlike TLM1, which uses pass-by-value semantics, TLM2 uses pass-by-reference, so it's more efficient. To support bus-based communication, TLM2 also includes a generic payload, which is a specialized transaction commonly used in memory-mapped bus-based systems. It's intended to be a general-purpose transaction class that lends itself to many applications, and we'll see it in more detail shortly. Just like with TLM1, we connect the initiator socket to the target socket, which preserves the flexibility in being able to swap component types via the factory. The difference is that instead of connecting ports to exports, we're connecting initiator sockets to target sockets. The simplest TLM2 communication is via the blocking transport operation, which is accomplished using the B transport task. Notice that it's a task, so the calling stream will block until the task completes and returns. The B transport task is a method of the initiator socket, and it's up to the target component to supply the implementation of the method. You can think of blocking transport as the transaction starting with the B transport call and ending with the return from the method. The non-blocking methods allow for modeling bidirectional communication with multiple phases per transaction. The non-blocking transport forward and non-blocking transport backward methods let the initiator and target respectively tell the other component what to do. These calls return an enum, UVM TLM sync E, that tells whether the transaction has been accepted, updated, or completed. The first argument is the transaction, 
The second is an enum that specifies the particular phase of the transaction. UVM provides a UVM TLM phase E enum that you can use, or you can create your own. The third argument is of type UVM TLM time, which is an object that allows time to be specified, including the time scale. So you're not just passing an integer between components that might have different time scales. A non-blocking initiator socket must ultimately be connected to a non-blocking target socket, just as a port must eventually be connected to an implementation. UVM also includes pass-through sockets that allow hierarchical connections. You can have an initiator socket connected to a pass-through initiator socket, connected to a pass-through target socket, connected to a target socket. As I mentioned, TLM2 includes the generic payload transaction type to model a general purpose bus transaction. For simple bus protocol modeling, the generic payload has enough content to model a transaction. For more advanced bus protocol modeling, where attributes such as protection fields, cache properties, and quality of service need to be supported, the generic payload can be extended using an extension object that contains the extra attributes. In cases where the protocol is not bus oriented at all, the extension object may become the main container of the transaction data. In any case, all members are randomizable and protected, so you can only access them via predefined accessor methods. The command field is an enum that has one of three possible values, read, write, or ignore. And the response status enum allows the target to update the transaction to indicate to the initiator what happened, whether the transaction completed successfully or not, or one of several other error conditions. The rest of the fields are pretty self-explanatory. So to summarize, in UVM, every port has to eventually be connected to an implementation. We typically call the IMPs exports as well, but every port has to be connected to something that provides the implementation of the methods. Most of the time, you're only going to use two connections between ports and exports. For analysis communication, as we saw, you'll have an analysis port typically on a monitor that will connect to a subscriber analysis export or in the case of a scoreboard, you'll create your own component that might have multiple analysis exports, but each analysis port will be connected to one or more analysis exports. The other connection that you'll typically use is between a driver and a sequencer. The driver has a port called seek item port. This defines the API that it uses to communicate with the sequencer for communicating transactions from the sequence. The sequencer provides the seek item export so you can connect the driver seek item port to the sequencer seek item export. Again, all of the TLM connections go from the caller to the implementation. So at the highest level, you say port.connect to export. If you have a child port, you say child port.connect to parent port. And on the export side, you say parent export.connect to child export. So that allows you to go up and down throughout the hierarchy and make all of the connections that you need so that from any given port, you eventually get connected to an implementation. That concludes this session on how TLM works. Thank you very much for your attention, and please stay tuned for the next session on the proper care and feeding of sequences.